Hello again and welcome to Inside Wyoming Basketball with head coach Larry Shiat. It's great to have you along. We're going to take a look at some highlights. We have much to get to here on the show. The Cowboys coming off two big home wins right here in the Arena Auditorium on that floor. This past week, the Cowboys got wins over Air Force and Nevada Las Vegas. Let's start with that Air Force game. This was a much needed win. The Cowboys had been out and hadn't been home playing on this floor in 18 days when they finally got to take on Air Force. Cowboys sure took to the home court. Well, our guys were happy to be home and uh, we talked about before the game, there are no such thing as must games when you get in conference play. Each and every game, home or away, is a must win. If you want to get to where initially everybody wants to get to, March Madness. So this was an important game. It was great to be home. And to be honest, Dave, I thought our guys played well from start to finish. One of the few games uh, we had one little bleep in the third quarter, but besides that, pretty good finish. Yeah, I thought so too. And I thought you got uh, great performances from everyone you put on the floor, including some really good stuff from the new Cowboys. Well, a lot of games down the stretch this year, uh, I don't know why, uh, the way we're built, I thought, uh-oh, in June and July, it could be tough certain nights. These guys have battled back each and every night. So we've had a plethora of close games. This one, we would end the right way. We'd knock our free throws in. We'd get our defensive rebounds against a, an Air Force team that was 10-4 and four at the time. Yeah, and very difficult to play. They kind of go about things a little bit differently. So you have to be well prepared, and the Cowboys certainly were, especially at that defensive end. But really, uh, offensively, too, they put together a good show for the Air Force game. Well, different guys at different yeah. moments have stepped up. We've relied heavily on Josh, not only as a leader, but a scorer. This was a game we chose to play small ball, and you know what? Even with small ball, we rebounded the ball very well against Air Force. Absolutely. Well, the Cowboys get that big win over the Air Force Academy on a Wednesday night. Then they come back on a Saturday afternoon to take on UNLV, and there is a team coach that's loaded with talent. There's all kinds of athletic ability on that team, and again, you have to go about things a little differently when you play this team. We needed our 6,000 fans. They gave us great, great empathy, or impetus, I should mm -hmm. say, down the home stretch. The double A got pretty loud those last three or four minutes, and it was a toe-to-toe -to -toe game. It didn't start quite like we liked. We've had a few of those moments. 23 to five, we were down early. Our guys would battle back little by little, grind it out by halftime. It's a ball game, and you know what? Second half, toe-to-toe, -to -toe, really proud of our defensive effort. Yeah, just kind of the way you draw it up, I, I guess, in that, uh, except for that start. And I know that the Cowboys, you know, didn't let it get to them. They didn't seem frustrated or flustered. What were you saying to the team when you are down that big margin early? What I can say on the air was to <laughs> grind it out and to step by step, it's gonna be a different guy, a different moment. Let's put pressure on our D rather than hope the ball goes through the hole and at some point, the ball will start going through the hole, and boy, did it. Jason McManaman unloaded with three threes to get us back in the game, and then it was a little bit of everybody. It was a little bit of Gorski, a little bit of Jordan Naughton, and a lot of bit of leadership by Josh Adams. Yeah, and again, you did the things you had to do down the stretch, the Cowboys did, to win that game against a very good basketball team. The defense is constant, consistent, I should say, and then hitting free throws and, and just keeping up uh, the pressure uh, down to the end of the game. Well, you know, you played 15 basketball games. Look, there's no such thing as an inexperienced or young team in football or basketball after six football games or 15 basketball games. It's us against them. You got to tie your shoes tight, plant your feet, take a stand. That's what our guys have done each and every night. That's what I'm proudest of. Yeah, and as we mentioned before, Coach, there's something about this place, playing at home. The Cowboys did draw some energy down the stretch in that UNLV game, I think, from this crowd. With school out for six weeks, which I still don't understand, but it's difficult without our students. Yeah. We had a good crowd, and it had been a snowy, tough night before. We had a good crowd, and like I said, those last three minutes, it was hard to hear in this building. Yeah, it really was. Well, stay with us. We have more to come on Inside Wyoming Basketball with head coach Larry Shiat. We're back right after this timeout.
Inside Wyoming Basketball with Larry Scheid is brought to you by Wyoming Relay, the University of Wyoming Outreach School, the University of Wyoming International Programs Office, and your Magnificent Seven Wyoming Toyota dealers. He is one of those new Cowboys who has really come on with a bang. He had a big game against UNLV, a career-high 11 points, five rebounds. Our own Kevin McKinney had a chance to sit down and visit with the true freshman from Rancho Cucamonga, California, Jordan Naughton. Adams whips it. Naughton done! Whoa! And a foul! Jordan, uh, everybody's seen you on the floor. They understand some things about you, but what they don't understand is that you like to cook. And so let's talk a little bit about that. How did you get involved in, in wanting to do that? I want to know what your best dish is, that kind of thing. Oh, uh, I don't know. I've always been interested in food, obviously, because I just like to eat, just like most people <laughs> like me. Uh, usually I cook breakfast. That's, that's what I like to cook the most, like pancakes, sausage, waffles, whatever. Uh, anything breakfast is my favorite. Does it kind of relax you, or what do you like about it? I think it's fun. Like, I just try to... I usually like cooking for other people, too, so I like when other people like what I cook, and then I like cooking for myself, obviously, and just enjoying the meal. It's fun. Let's get to the, the game of basketball first. And, and I, you were an outstanding player in high school, and uh, here you come to the University of Wyoming. I know it's a, a, an adjustment, but you're not playing all the time like you did uh, in, in high school. What kind of mental adjustment is that, and, and has it been difficult for you? Uh, well, in the beginning of the season, Coach told us it's going to be a process. It's going to be some days other guys are going to have great come out games, and it's going to be different people on different nights. So what we have to do is we all have to be ready. Just whenever you get your name called, go out there and just do what you're supposed to do, do your job, go as hard as you possibly can, and uh, try to play to the game plan. So whether that be five minutes, 20 minutes, if you can contribute, then you're supposed to contribute as much as you can. Well, certainly one case in point would be at New Mexico State where you were just tremendous. And that, that had to feel really good and, and, and give you a little bit more confidence. Yeah, I agree. Uh, it was a fun game. We all played well as a team, especially, you know, the energy was great. Uh, we all came out to play, we came ready, we came hard, and we got the important win, so it was very nice. I'll talk a little bit about the two adjustments, new environment, and, and the college environment, and then the college game of basketball. Um, well, coming from California, where it's like a different culture and different environment, obviously, uh, coming to Wyoming, it was like a little bit of a change, I would say, that I get used to. Uh, one thing that kind of caught me off, off guard was the altitude difference, like they say, and they kind of warned me about it, but uh, it was the first probably week, it was kind of difficult. And the college game is just faster, stronger, harder, better players. So the level of competition has increased. You always have to work out more, practice more, shoot more, and more preparation required. You know, I was just talking to Reggie Slater today, one of our great players of all time, who came from Houston. And he said, I was a big city guy when I came to Wyoming. He says, the best part of the college experience was the different culture. Uh, do you look at it that way? I like the different change because it's I like the community, the fans, and the people that all seem so close to each other, and it seems like a big old family. And I definitely like the the level of compat the the, just the compassion that the fans have, the, the love of the game, the support. And it's all there, so it's great. Where do you think you've improved the most since you arrived in Miami on the on the basketball court? On the court, probably cardio wise, I got in better shape, running around, and uh, just working out more overall. Uh, I try, I try to uh, be very aggressive on the offense rebounds, defense rebounds, and just playing defense, things like that. Has the family been out uh, to, to see you play or to see the experience you're having? Well, they've been to a couple um, away games. They haven't been to Wyoming to watch a game yet, but they went to San Diego State. They went to Las Vegas to watch us play two games, so they enjoyed that. What was their uh, opinion when you selected Wyoming? They were supportive. They, uh, they liked the coaching staff and they liked the, they liked the program, so they had confidence in me and they, they hoped that I was doing good. Boy, Jordan Naughton had a big game against UNLV. Going up against that big guy Zimmerman, he was uh, so good defensively, but he did everything well in that game, Coach. Well, JB and Jordan gave us a 1-2 impetus in that game. We knew 
the interior of UNLV would be formidable. Uh, JB got in foul trouble, Jordan saves the day. Actually, Turbo, our trainer, saved the day because Jordan in the first half lost his contact and thank goodness we were able to get it back and put it back and then the second half, boy, did he come to town. Yeah, it was good he didn't have to go one-eyed Jordan in that game because uh, he used both of them uh, when he got that contact in and was special. He brings a physical nature to the floor, doesn't he? He gave us great inside presence at both ends of the court in this past game. And you know what was best about both Jordan and JB? They had not even scratched. They had not even got in the Air Force game. But the readiness and the belief system that these guys have, that it's a different guy each night, I think that came to fruition. Are you seeing these young players, you talk about Jordan and JB, both young big guys for the Cowboys, you seeing progress being made just slowly each minute by minute getting better? Most definitely, and especially on the defensive end, where we really need a presence. We need somebody to make sure that we have the lane secured a basket presence. Both of those guys are improving drastically defensively. And it, it's also great to hear that Jordan's a cook. You know, I got Jeff, I got Flip, an executive <laughs> chef. We go into business someday. Absolutely. Well, stay with us. We have more to come on Inside Wyoming Basketball with head coach Larry Shiat. We are back right after this timeout. What happens when you join your favorite Mountain West basketball team in America's most exciting city? Six days of heart-stopping hoops you'll have to see to believe. It's the Mountain West Men's and Women's Basketball Championships, March 7th through the 12th at the Thomas & Mack Center in Las Vegas. For tickets, go to the MW.com slash 2016 or your team's athletic ticket office. Don't delay. The 2016 Mountain West Basketball Championship. It's March Magic. Alan Herndon, Cowboy big man, well, he's a chip off the old block. His father, Mike, played at VMI, and Alan, of course, doing big things with the Wyoming Cowboys. We had a chance to sit down and get to know both Alan and Mike Herndon. I know a few things about his basketball career, and, uh, just some of the news clippings I've saw from him, and you know, obviously the poster that I've seen him in, and just uh, people always just t tell me he was a, a great rebounder, big physical guy, would dunk everything. For me, back then playing six six as a center was okay because I could play guys that were six eight. Back then, we didn't have a shot clock, didn't have a three point line, and most of the time, got balls went inside out, and. Uh, I held my own, held my own against those guys. But I uh, had a good career, uh, not as well to go any further than that, so I entered the Air Force and spent 22 years in the Air Force. And then he taught me a lot about going in the post and finishing strong, and then he would take me to the gym. He would do a lot of things with me, and uh, I tried to play him one-on-one, -on -one, but of course we all know how that went when I was younger. And you don't see it in his game today, but he has that in him. Uh, a few back, back to the basket. Um, but from his mother, that's where he got the ability to dribble. He was fortunate. I grew up in the country. So where I played, where I learned how to play basketball, it was an uneven surface. He grew up on a, on a paved street. So his first introduction to basketball, the thing that got him going was the movie Space Jam with Michael Jordan. You know, he saw, he saw that, he tried to emulate it out in, in the, in the uh, driveway. And that's what really got him. And then his mother had him when he was in a youth league and she put him at point guard. Growing up, I think that's what really made me want to play basketball so much is like always walking past it. As, as soon as you walk into our house, you just see it's right there. The guys that called it for me was a basic a law play. Caught it just right and uh, they, someone in the end had got it and sent it to me and uh, it was about a five by seven or so. And so at that time I went to a drugstore, got it enlarged and put it on poster board and just kept it and just for memory of, of playing. That was kind of the, the memorable thing. I'm not gonna lie, it's one of the best posters I've seen. I, I always wondered like how he got that because it's such a clean poster. But uh, it's always referenced, you know, from when I was a freshman and I just began to dunk. I was like, hey, I can dunk, I can dunk. He's like, until you get one of these, I don't want to hear it. He's able to do a few more things than I can. And he's, he's got his own posters and he's got some more to come, but I do have to reference it just to remind him, yeah, I played a little back in the day. Growing up, when he would, whenever he would see me play, he would always be yelling out, chicken wing, to try to like, so I could front, uh, get in the post and get the ball, you know, gotta have your chicken wings up. You know, you can't say, put your elbows out. 
So I would, the term I would use is chicken wing. So to get that point across is when you grab the ball and you chin it. So get those elbows out so nobody's gonna reach in for the ball. So I think uh, folks in Colorado Springs heard me a lot in the high school ranks calling chicken wing, chicken wing. Fortunately, there's a lot of fans here, so you won't hear me in the double A hear that, but that is often reminded to grab it with two hands, chin it, and get folks from starting to reach in. No matter how many fans there, there can be thousands, somehow I still hear my dad, my mom, and my sister's voice. No matter how many people are there, and it means a lot to me to know that I have them there and they're able to see me develop and grow as a person, as a man. It's exciting. It really, really is exciting to see it from a dad, from a fan. Now I understand how my father saw when he came into the games. You just pr pride, just, you know, that's that kid that you saw that was a kid that you saw him walk, you changed his diaper, you saw him grow up to a, a young man. So it's really pride. And also, last year's run was just incredible. To see it in Las Vegas and then to go out to Seattle and just be a part of that, it's really special. Alan Herndon really has come on, a young player coach that is playing with some experience. He's had some playing time, but Boy, he uh, must take after his dad quite a bit, those inside moves, huh? Well, a lot of people changed roles this year, including Al. He comes in this year, and we needed leadership. He was going to play significant minutes, and he has. And he's improved at both ends. And physically, although we don't see it all the time, 15 pounds each year. And when he does that next year, you're going to see even a bigger difference. But what sold us three years ago when we would recruit him was mom and dad, again, and that's been the case in many of our pokes. Core values, family values. This is a, a family who understood college basketball. Both mom and dad played college basketball. And you know what? Uh, sold us that this was a guy that would understand development, learning, and process. Yeah, from Colorado Springs, Al Herndon. The uh, family does have a chance to get up and see him play a lot. That great family support system with the Herndons, to be sure, huh? Yeah, and Al has done a great job. You know, he's a quiet leader, mm -hmm. but I have a sneaking suspicion from reports that Papa Shai's got. In the locker room, sometimes maybe not so quiet. He's got a great personality. He's got a great sense of humor. Yeah, it was great getting to know both Alan and Mike Herndon. Stay with us. We're back with more on Inside Wyoming Basketball with head coach Larry Shiat. Back right after this. Inside Wyoming Basketball with Larry Scheidt is brought to you by Wyoming Relay, the University of Wyoming Outreach School, the University of Wyoming International Programs Office, and your Magnificent Seven Wyoming Toyota dealers. And welcome back to Inside Wyoming Basketball with head coach Larry Scheidt. Well, busy times for the Cowboys and really everybody in the Mountain West Conference, smack dab in the middle. Well, kind of the start, just four games into conference play, Coach. But this is a busy time. The Cowboys have two on the road, two at home coming up. But at this moment, a little over halfway in the overall schedule, uh, four games into conference play, what do you think? Give us a thumbnail sketch, a scouting report on this young Cowboy team. Well, I said early uh, that in June and July when the staff was getting together discussing our new personnel and how we would play, and Papa Shai was most worried about, I don't want these young guys pounded early. And our schedule dictated that could happen. Not only did we play some really good teams, we would play double the amount of teams on the road. Uh, that didn't happen, and that is probably the nicest surprise package we could have had. Dave, we've battled every game. There's been a level of consistency where one might think there wouldn't have been any consistency. We were in a lot of games down the home stretch. I believe we learned. I'd rather learn from winning, which we've done recently, but all growth, all improvement. And as I've said, you know, you've played 15, 16 ball games already. You are no longer, nor can you expect to be called inexperienced or young. That's out of the washing machine right now. Now, 
you are in the present and every game is a must win and you need to play it that way. And I, I, I really like the growing up our kids have done. Coach, have you seen this Mountain West Conference as kind of what we thought it might be, kind of wide open. There's no clear cut real powerhouse in this league. Although I do think the league is pretty good. I mean, there's good basketball teams. We've seen four of them. What do you think of the conference so far? Well, we have far better balance than I think was anticipated. The bottom perhaps is up. The top had some disappointments early and that hurt our RPI. Our top teams who needed to grab those top teams at the BCS level, we fell a little short. That's why our RPI is down a little bit. It makes for a more competitive conference. A lot of worrying because, you know, everybody wants to get in the dance. And you know what? Last year we found out even a Colorado State team who really got spiked by the NCAA committee, a 28 RPI. So maybe that RPI isn't quite what the projections claim it is. But there's going to be some dog fights to get in that tournament at the end of the year. Yeah, some big games coming up next for the Cowboys. Two on the road. Now, Cowboys know a little bit about that road travel. You've got some of that in already. But here you go. Two on the road, out for six days. Uh, that's what's coming up next for Wyoming. It all evens out. Yeah. Uh, you know, four of our six conference games, we start on the road. That would be six out of eight for this team. But again, because of how we're built, I think it's a blessing. Our guys take the challenge. They have shown no difference in style of play offensively or defensively when we're on the road or home. So that's a good thing. Hey, San Jose is going to be ready. They just went overtime with CSU. And I don't have to tell you, there'll be 15,000 waiting for us in the pit. Coach, steady improvement each game out, each minute out for the Cowboys. Are you seeing that? And uh, sure, uh, that looks to be the case right now for this team. Statistically, far better defensively yeah. the last month as we were in November, and that's a good thing because in this league, pace, tempo is very important. Well, you bet. Cowboys, of course, two on the road, then two at home. That's what they have over the next couple of weeks, and you come back next time and check out the highlights with us on the next Inside Wyoming Basketball with head coach Larry Shiat. That'll do it for us. For the head coach, I'm Dave Walsh. So long, everybody. McMahon and McDonough for three! Goodness! Adams whips it. Norton done! Whoa! And a foul! Washington gets it across. Adams a two on one. Nice look! Norton again!